on a bell curve, okay? We're on a bell curve. shaped curve <laughs> with she, humans in the middle. Yeah. Robots. Yeah. And aliens are, are in on the one future. side. Are okay. in the future. In the past, we have apes and somehow dolphins. They're very <laughs> smart. I can't make the exact connection, <laughs> but you know dolphins. what I mean. Welcome back to the Bug in a Rug podcast. As always, my name is Kaylin. As usual, I'm Whitney. And today we are bringing you another story that may or may not keep you up at night. Hopefully by the end, but we will all still be able to sleep as snug as a bug in a rug. But only time shall tell. I'd like to start today's session with some nice fresh chair yoga. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our feet on the floor, flat on the floor, everyone. We're going to put our hands flat on our legs. Okay. Yeah. And just kind of, you know, feel the way your feet hit the floor and feel your hands on your legs. And we're going to take some deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And that was your relaxation for the day. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my yoga time. Is, ten, is that a true technique or did you make that up on the spot? I was going to keep going with it and make it a pretty long session, but then I realized we do have a podcast episode to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought, you know, we might as well kind of find our center even just brief, brief, briefly. 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 Yeah. Briefly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got it. I'm one. blue. da ba dee da ba da da ba da da ba da Just kind of like bring us together here that plus the mood lighting that you set by flipping on and off various light switches until you felt like it was the perfect i think i found it it's pretty good it's a little dark but you know we usually what what is it you you know from hercules little dark little gloomy (laughs) 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 little dark little gloomy i thought you were talking about um you merely adopted the dog. I was born. <laughs> I was born. Raised by it. There's no weed in here. That's weed. There's no weed in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's not from the movie, I don't think. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely it is. Actually, I don't know what it's from. I think somebody just made that up. Somebody did a parody of yeah. Bane. Yeah. And it was so good, I've blended them together. Yeah. And we went from chair yoga to Bane. To Bane. I mean, there's no other way to go, There's no other way to go if you gotta go away. But really, I think we should all take time to do a little brief centering at the beginning of the podcast before we get into whatever nightmare you've brought for us this week. Absolutely. It's a dream. It's not a nightmare. I've decided to take the podcast in a direction of uh, light, fun, joyfulness... Oh, I didn't know we were playing the lying game. <laughs> like a bunch of liars. <laughs> like a bunch of li- liars. You never bring... No. I almost said you never bring joy to us. Because <laughs> that sounded really bad. Wow, okay. You never bring bubbly topics Dang. to the table. Dang. Well, I mean, maybe. I guess it depends on how you feel about chimpanzees. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it depends on how you feel about chimpanzees. Uh, Before you rush to a judgment, let's learn a little bit about chimpanzees. All right, no more monkeying around. Uh, No more monkeying around. (laughs) All right, everybody put put yourselves back in your barrels. (laughs) Monkeys in a barrel, so you're talking about? Yeah. Do you remember that game? I don't remember how to play, but I remember it was a thing. I'm just trying to make big long chain. Yeah. I don't know if that's right. I don't either. They were red, right? And their arms were like I, looped around? Sure. I don't quite remember, I'm going to be honest. If you remember how to play Monkey in a Barrel, I didn't, or if that's not the real name of it and you know what the name is and you know what we're talking about, yeah. I'll be surprised, but also I'll send you a sticker. I'll send you a sticker. <laughs> Chimpanzees are grouped as great apes along with the bonobo, the gorilla, the orangutan, and the human being. What's a bonobo? It is, I believe they said like a, it looks like a chimpanzee, but it's like a little bit smaller or something like that. 
Okay. Yeah. They're basically the same thing. Almost. Not, I they're would, not the same thing, but... I wouldn't be able to tell them apart, so it's fine. Yeah. So a description from dictionary.com describes chimpanzees as, quote, having a brown to black coat, a relatively hairless face with a rounded muzzle, prominent ears, and hands adapted for knuckle walking and noted for its intelligence and human-like behavior. They are actually our closest living relatives, sharing about 98% oh of our genetic blueprint. Closer than you and I? Yeah. Closer than me and mom? Yeah. Closer than you and mom? Yeah. Closer than dad and either of us? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Closer than dad and... Listen, you can't... Avoid? Chimpanzees are like all of... Each of our identical twins. <gasps> yeah. They're our real doppelgangers. I guess technically they'd be fraternal, right? Because... If I went out... <laughs> if I go out and I buy a brownish black jacket... You said that their coat is brownish black. Yeah. I'd be halfway there. <laughs> Actually, you're all, I mean, I mean, what? Now, these distant cousins of ours reside mainly in Central and West Africa, living in communities consisting of several dozen, being led by an alpha male and his groupies. There are They are mainly found in treetops, grooming one another, or swinging from branch to branch in search of food. So their diet consists of fruits, plants, insects, eggs, nuts, and meat. They have been known to kill and eat other monkeys, small antelope, and even tortoises, which they slam against trees in order to break their shells. I mean, that's how I break my eggs open. Yeah, you slam it against a tree. Yeah. You go mm -hmm. outside and you crack it on a tree, mm -hmm. and then you put it in the pan, and then you bring it oh, back Oh, it never inside. makes it to the pan. That's just how I break eggs open. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure where we're going with that. Nowhere. It's the truth. <laughs> now, who's playing the lion game now? Deadass. <laughs> Wait, so, but chimpanzees don't have tails, yeah? No. But they're going to swing around in the trees? Bold strategy, Cotton. What? How are you picturing this? They no, use no, no, their no, arms. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is a lot of primates, it seems, use their tails for balance. Yeah, but you don't have to. Not um, all cats have tails for balance. I didn't. We're not talking about cats. I'm not talking all monkeys about. Have tails. I didn't say they did. I'm saying it's a bold strategy for those who have less balance <laughs> ability. <laughs> balance ability. You're just making this up. I no, I'm not, I was a genuine thing. Not everything's a joke. Not everything has to be a joke. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know. Yeah, they don't have tails. They don't need them. Long arms. Pretty talented. Good hands. Them. Yeah. Cracking tortoise. Tortoise. Yeah. What's the plural of tortoise? <laughs> Tortoises. <laughs> I really wanted it to be tortoise. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. <laughs> oh my god. So even without brute force, they are able to retrieve food from tricky situations. Primologist. Primatologist. Primatologist. Like primate. Jane Goodall, which some people may recognize her name, observed chimpanzees shaping and using sticks in order to retrieve insects from their nests or from logs. They were also seen using stones to smash open tasty nuts and using leaves as sponges to soak up drinking water. They're very intelligent creatures, having the ability to recognize numbers and the meaning of those numbers. They can communicate through sign language, and they have displayed the ability to cooperate with others for a common purpose. I've seen Planet of the Apes. I have not, so. I haven't. I've seen TikToks about Planet <laughs> of the Apes. <laughs> I've seen Planet of the Apes. <laughs> it's about monkeys. It's about chimps. Yeah, it's over. about chimps, and they teach them so much, and then I think maybe there's some kind of probably scientific shenanigans that happen. Yeah. And they become... Much more intelligent. And and Earth becomes the planet of the apes. Yeah. I mean, technically, it was we already. are great apes, so it was planet of the apes all along. Some of us are only good apes. <laughs> Others, Some of us such as myself, only... could be considered great. Today I was a below average ape. <laughs> Today? Some days I'm a below average ape. 
<laughs> and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I've come to terms with it. And you just take the L and you move along. Right. And you hope another day that you can consider yourself a great day. <laughs> an above average day. The days that you're great are usually just like few and far between, you know? Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great every day. <laughs> All right, so due to their fascinating abilities in the wild, they have been displayed as childlike companions or sidekicks in the media. So this portrayal of them and how intelligent they are made interest in their behavior grow, causing them to become popular as exotic pets. So people, you know, Jane Goodall and other studies like this really spark people to be like, they're basically a child. And then TV shows presented them this way. So they were like... I'll take that as a pet. Listen, anything with a mouth can bite, including children. Yeah. But, like, folks forget that wild animals are wild animals. Mm-hmm. Even, like, domesticated animals are are still animals. Like, yeah. they... But they're, there's also, like, they are domesticated and have been for a while. Like, at the zoo, like, we always say, like, there's a reason zebras aren't pets, even though horses are. So... One yeah. has much more muscle and a much, much worse temper. Yeah. I'll let you guess which one. <laughs> Not you. If you can guess which one <laughs> and can tell me about monkeys in a barrel, I'll send you two stickers. I'll send you two stickers. Gotta do both. <laughs> so the first five years of a chimp- chimpanzee's life is critical as they learn from their mothers about social bonding, scavenging for food, risks they may face, etc., etc., if they do not receive these teachings, they can become anxious and depressed, which can lead to other harmful behaviors. We call them stereotypical behaviors in our setting. This could be anything from pulling their own hair out or pacing back and forth or rocking back and forth, different things like that. They're coping mechanisms because they can't cope any other way, mm-hmm. pretty much. Over their lifespan of approximately 50 years, they can grow to be between 1 and 1.7 meters, or 3 to 3.5 feet tall, and weigh anywhere from 32 to 60 kilograms, or anywhere from 70 to 130 pounds. Damn. So, they could be my size. Thick. Shorter. By like an inch. Wait, how tall? They can be five and a half feet. Oh, I thought you, I was thought you said three and a half feet. Three to five and a half. That's why I was confused. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yes. Yes. They're just hairy people. Yeah. With a nasty mouth. We share ninety eight percent of our genetic makeup with them. So it's just the hair. Yeah. I guess we. I mean, we can communicate in a way. So I guess, like voice wise, like we could talk. Yeah, but Although, if you that. think about it, they've created their own language, too. Yeah, we've just learned. Yeah. It's just how we were learned. How, we, how we were learned. Right. How we were learned. Maybe we're not smarter than chimpanzees. No. <laughs> no. Today's a below average ape day. <laughs> now, I tell you all of that to tell you the story. I already a- know. Hey. Yeah? I've seen what I needed to see. <laughs> Immediately no. <laughs> Immediately no. You have to listen, though. You're my only... You're the only person here today it'll be greatly appreciated if you let me continue appreciated. <laughs> i get it uh, oh, now i tell you all of that to tell you the story of a chimpanzee named travis immediately no <laughs> <laughs> i have terrible name i've heard what i needed to hear <laughs> immediately no. now keep in mind everything that i have stated above thank you Travis is a male common chimpanzee that was born on October 21st, 1995 at Mike and Connie Braun Casey's chimpanzee compound near Festus, Missouri. Now, that is a whole other story we can get into. PETA has basically had this particular compound sighted throughout the years. Um, I didn't really want to get into it because it was just a lot of information, but the um, compound has a different name now, but if you want to look into it, um, you can. Like, they they have a website. PETA has a website about them specifically. So it's basically like Tiger King issues, but with chimpanzees. Chimpanzees. Yes. I haven't watched all of Tiger King. Tiger King. But yes. I've seen it That's what it is. Sanctuary for chimpanzees. Quote, unquote. Where are they getting the chimpanzees from? I don't know. At three days old... 
Travis was, quote-unquote, adopted by Sandra and Jerome Harold for $50,000. The couple took Travis to live with them in Stamford, Connecticut, and he became like a son to the pair, going everywhere with them. Travis would go to Jerome's work, which was a towing company, to ride around town on jobs and pose for photos with people around town. Listen, some babies are ugly enough, I'd believe it. <laughs> no, they said he was a chimpanzee. They weren't like, this is our ugly son. <laughs> <laughs> they could have, I'd believe it. <laughs> they could have, yeah, that's fair. This is our ugly... Yeah, who are you to be like, the, the, your son's a monkey? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> be like, what did you call Travis? How dare you? <laughs> that looks like a great ape. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me, and so do you. Because <laughs> so you me. are, right. like I don't... Yeah, I mean, yeah, true. Well, he became a celebrity. Many people who interacted with Travis or the Herald said that the chimpanzee would act just like a child or a toddler. Mm -hmm. One neighbor of Sandra and Jerome even stated that Travis listened better than his young nephews. So Travis quickly learned from his interactions with others how to use keys, how to wrestle around with them for fun, how to open doors by himself, how to dress himself. He would drink from wine glasses. He could use the remote to watch TV, and he even memorized the schedules of local ice cream trucks. Now that's what you do with that kind of power. Right, right. That's what you do with that kind of level of intelligence. Keep my schedule for me. However, I do want to say... Yeah. Roles reversed. Mm Mm-hmm. That's not the right way to say this. If a monkey adopted me. If a monkey adopted me. (laughs) I wouldn't learn as quickly. If instead of a monkey, it was a robot, people wouldn't be cool with this. Yeah, that's true. They'd be horrified. It's a robot, but with chimpanzees. It's too smart. It shouldn't have this much power. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I think people sometimes, and I catch myself doing this at work a lot too, and then I think about it, and then I'm like, ah, it's weird. I think they, I don't know what the word, personify, yeah, personify animals. Yeah. And it's like, they're animals, it's not a person, but... I do it, too, at work, because I'll Mm -hmm. walk around and talk to all the animals, and then I'm like, you have no idea what I'm saying. (laughs) But but in the case of a chimp, (laughs) they probably do. To an extent. To an extent, yeah. Like, more so than a lot of other animals, right? right? Like, they are very, they learn very quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, but that's what I'm saying. I know this doesn't make sense, but, like, if you skip over us between chimp and robot... (laughs) It's on the same... We're on a bell curve, okay? We're on a bell bell shape curve. curve with <laughs> humans in the middle. Yeah. Robots. Yeah. And aliens are, are in on the one future. side. Are okay. in the future. In the past, we have apes and somehow dolphins. They're very smart. <laughs> I can't make the exact connection, <laughs> but you know dolphins. what I mean. That's but, funny. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, intelligence-wise, you're, you're not necessarily moving up or down. You're moving... It's lateral. a lateral it's move. It's a lateral move. It's a lateral move. We come move. back to this. Between robots and chimpanzees is a lateral move. <laughs> lateral move. <laughs> Fight me if you think otherwise. I don't think... I, di- I Not didn't you. Oh, okay. Specifically, probably Dad. <laughs> I already know Dad's going to come at me with all oh, this. Oh, gosh. Travis was adored, and no one really asked questions as to why a chimpanzee was living in their town. Everybody was just kind of... This is our monkey son. Cool with this it. This is our... He's not the really town monkey, adopted. Right? Monkey's the wrong term. I thought you were going to come at me with this from the get-go, if I'm being honest. This is like a snake venom poison thing. Okay, monkeys and great apes are not the same. Monkeys are a small to medium-sized primate that typically has a long tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm They're saying. They're all like, primates, but... This yeah. is, so me saying this is our monkey son, Travis, is wrong. Yeah. This is our ape son, Travis. Yes. Which, like... He is great. And everybody was like, yeah. Right, but like human or chimpanzee, samesies. Right. Right, this is our great ape son, (laughs) Travis. Yeah, I know what I was going to say. He has a lot of hair. (laughs) He's 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 very self conscious. There's that disease where people grow a bunch of hair all over the body. Mm -hmm. But please believe it or not, they had those people on there, some of them. Sure. Anybody else watch the show? No? Okay. I did. Uh, Well, everybody liked him. Mm -hmm. And then in 2003, (laughs) there was a little incident. Travis. Went out about the town alone. As as he does. As, as he, does, he is as one, to, one do. to do. No, he's not one to do. He never does this. Mm-hmm. As the, he, he was... Let me get into it. The Herald's car was stopped at an intersection, and a pedestrian, whether on purpose or not, I don't know, threw a soda, soda bottle towards the car, 
Well, it went into a partially opened window and it hit Travis. Oh, no. In retaliation, Travis unbuckled his seatbelt, got out of the car, and chased the man. Fortunately, he did not catch him. Instead, Travis evaded police for several hours after this, just kind of running around doing whatever he wanted. When they finally caught up with Travis, they tried to lure, 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 lure. Lure? Lure? Lure. <laughs> lure. Lure? 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 They try to lure him into a car, only for him to hop out of another door and begin the chase again. They eventually got Travis back to Sandra and Jerome, and oh, no man. harm was done. Oh, no. Chimpanzees can reach speeds of 25 miles per hour. Yeah. How did that man outrun him? Yeah. Wow, he had time. He maybe got into another car or building or something. Wasn't a fair race, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, no. Travis would not. have destroyed him. <laughs> wait, so, 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 wait. So, they were driving, and they were stopped at an intersection, and somehow a soda bottle came flying at the car, through the window, hits Travis, pissed, gets out of the car, chases him down. Yeah. And the police are, take quite a while to catch him. Yeah, because if you were listening the first time, which it seems like you were not. I was. They kept trying to get him to go into a car. Yeah, he just went out the other side. Yeah, and he would just kept going out the other, because he knows how to unlock cars. Like, like, he knows how to get in and out of cars on his own. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Man, he's a smart chimpanzee. He's a smart chimpanzee. Like, he's a smart chimpanzee. They finally got him back. I, I don't know if they tired him out. They brought his favorite treat. Who knows? But they finally got him back to Sandra and Jerome. This incident garnered so much attention that it prompted the passing of a Connecticut law prohibiting people from keeping primates weighing more than 23 kilograms or 50 pounds as pets. So great apes were basically out at this point. The law also required owners of exotic pets to apply for permits. However, the Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection did not enforce these new laws onto Travis and the Heralds because they had known them for so long that they didn't think Travis posed a public safety risk. And so they kind of went about it in a way that was like, the laws, this is a new law starting that is now. starting now. So anything before that doesn't count. So we're making a law based on specifically you for specifically this incident. Yeah. But it doesn't apply to you. Yeah. I'm sorry? And just so you know, Travis at this time weighed almost 200 pounds. How? How? They're not supposed to weigh that much. He's fat. He's That's fat. why he couldn't outrun that guy. Yeah, but he outran police. You're saying all no, police are fat? No, he out evaded. He, he evaded uh, police. Evaded police. That He's little mean, tricksies. It does not mean he knows where all the ice cream truck yeah. routes are. That's probably why he was trying. That's what, He knows where all the ice cream truck routes are. Yeah. That's why he's so thick. Yeah. Thick with a P8. <laughs> thick with a P8. <laughs> All right, so Jerome Harold sadly passed away in 2004, leaving behind Sandra, who was grieving from losing her only child in a road traffic accident not long before. So this caused Sandra to treat Travis even more like her own child because he was kind of like the only family she had left in a weird way. So she would take this. Okay, hold on. This gets a little weird. She would take baths with Travis as well as cuddle with him at night. He even allegedly brushed her hair each night before bed and would give her a kiss every morning before she left the house. As their relationship progressed, it got like, it just kept getting like weirder and weirder. In my opinion, it's too far. He's a pet. He's not a person. He's an animal. He's it not a person. It doesn't matter. Even if you see him as a child. Yeah. Ma'am. Yeah. So Stephen Renee Tello, executive director of Primarily Primates, a sanctuary for trip chimps in Texas, later commented, quote, this is a crazy relationship. He was probably very bonded with her. I can kind of see it in his eyes. This is his surrogate mother, unquote. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, but they raised him that way from the beginning. Yeah. And then instead of it, it, it and then it intensified. So like, it's the only female presence really that he's ever had this close to him yeah and then it's just them yeah it, it's just gonna intensify the the bond that they had yeah now i have a question for you oh no do you think she slept with the chimp do you want my honest answer <laughs> yes 
My head is moving, but I'm not going to tell the <laughs> listeners which way it's moving. Okay. We'll move but on. But I'm very firm in that belief. I, Me too, actually. Okay. We'll move on. So this relationship would take a horrible turn on February 16th, 2009. At around 3.40 p.m., Sandra Harold's 55-year-old friend, Charla Nash. Now, her name is C-H-A-R-L-A-N-A-S-H. Charla, I'm assuming. Uh, Charla came over to visit. During the visit, Travis took Sandra's keys and went outside. Charla didn't really think twice, having known Travis for pretty much his whole life, because she's been friends with Sandra this whole time. Mm -hmm. She grabbed his favorite toy, a Tickle Me Elmo, and walked outside in order to kind of coax him to come back in. Mm -hmm. Some people think that maybe he thought the ice cream truck, like it was time for the ice cream truck, so Mm -hmm. he grabbed the keys and was like, let's go in the car, like we're going to go get ice cream. cream And Charla was like, no, like let's go inside, like let's... Was his mom there? Yeah, Sandra was there. I think they both might have walked out, but she was just like, come on, Travis, like, sure, let's get back inside. Now, upon seeing Charla with his favorite toy, Travis flew into a rage. Travis jumped on Charla, ripping at her face and appendages with all of his might. Sandra, now 70 years old, mind you, tried to stop him by hitting him repeatedly with a shovel and then stabbing him in the back with a butcher knife, but he wouldn't relent. Sandra ran to her car and basically locked herself inside and had to call 911. Because she was, she's 70 years old, going up against 200-pound chimpanzee. Like, it's just not, there's nothing you can do. Jeez. So she was now hiding in her car, thinking that Charla was deceased. She thought Charla was dead Mm -hmm. at this point. Oh, well, like, I would too. Yeah. So the 911 call, which you can listen to, I listened to part of it. Gross. um, Opens with the operator asking, what is wrong? Obviously, 911, what's your emergency? Sandra starts pleading with him to send the police as you can hear Travis's screams in the background. You can hear him, like, screeching. Yeah. So the operator asks, I need you to calm down. Why do you need somebody there? And then Sandra goes, what? Please, God. And then the operator goes, what is the problem, ma'am? And then Sandra goes, he's killing my friend. And then the operator goes, who's killing your friend? And Sandra goes, chimp, my my chimpanzee. And the guy, the operator goes, oh, your chimpanzee is killing your friend? And then Sandra goes, yes, he ripped her apart. Hurry up, hurry up, please. And then the operator goes, what is going on? What is the monkey doing? Tell me what the monkey is doing. And Sandra goes, he, he ripped her face off. The operator, he ripped her face off. Sandra, gun, they got to shoot him. Please, please, hurry, hurry, please. The operator goes, ma'am, ma'am, I need you to calm down. They're already on their way. And Sandra goes, I can't, I can't. He's eating her. He's eating her. And the operator goes, he's eating her? And Sandra goes, please, God, please, where are they? Where are they? Now, the conversation goes on for a couple minutes. The whole video that I watched was about four minutes, although I don't think the 911 call necessarily lasted that long. Yeah. But she is just screaming for help. And the operator, at first, some people think that he sounds like he doesn't... Believe her. Believe her or understand because he may not know she has a pet chimpanzee. Yeah. So when she says that, he's like, what are you talking about? What what are you saying? And then when she gets to, like, no, he's killing my friend. Yeah. Like, it's like chimpanzee is ripping her apart. He's eating her. He's like, oh, okay. Now, obviously, he's still sending the police, but... He's like, what are you talking about? And then he's like, oh, no. Well, yeah, I mean, I think as 911 operators, I don't know for sure, but I would say, like, you do call for the correct, like, ambulance, police, whatever, but at the same time, you're trying to get more information to send them. Like, who it is. While they're on their way. Yeah. Who who it is, where you're going, any details you can provide. So, like, you're trying to ask more questions, even if you've already dispatched Mm -hmm. people. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's terrifying, the 911 call. I sped it up because I didn't like to listen well, to it. Well, it's terrifying just listening to you, like, read it. <laughs> so, as police arrived, Travis approached their cars and attempted to actually get into their cars. He opened, like, he tried to open the passenger door on a couple, and then he walked around to the driver's side door of Officer Frank Chiafari. And Officer Frank Chiafari actually shot him several times. Absolutely. Because he did open the door. 
Travis then retreated into his home where he was found dead next to his cage. Now, paramedics swarmed Charla, stating that her injuries were horrendous. Travis had torn off her eyelids and nose, chewed on her face, which destroyed some of her mid-face bone structure. He scalped her, he gouged out and ate her eyes, he ripped off one of her hands and almost tore the other arm off and caused significant brain tissue injuries. Between all of the injuries, Charla lost pretty much half of her blood. However, she did survive. Jeez, oh my gosh. Now, the paramedics and the team that first worked on Charla when she first came into the hospital, they said that it was so, such a gruesome and an unusual sight that they actually all were, like, given the opportunity Oh, they to... all got therapy. Yeah. They all got therapy. Yeah. <laughs> they do that. There's, there are teams that are in place for mm-hmm. certain traumas. Yeah. That... It, basically, there's a meeting that happens in some hospitals that is very quickly do we need the it's not really called a therapy team but like do we need the team for like debriefing yeah and it, make sure and, everybody's okay right, can cope right with like this. is this something that people can cope with or is yeah. this something that we need to offer Absolutely. support and and they can like yeah. they should and this i can't even imagine not having that in place yeah oh yeah it was terrible So Charla Nash's injuries were treated with several hours of surgeries over the following 72 hours, but it was determined that she would pretty much be blind for life. Her facial structure was permanently disfigured, but she was not in any physical pain. Which, that's amazing. Well, eventually, eventually. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess, like, they got it to a place that she was disfigured, but none of, like, the nerve tissue or anything Right, but that's what I'm saying, like, with that much trauma some people are in permanent pain like their body just can't cope with the change right so she was transferred to the cleveland clinic in cleveland ohio which she stayed at for several months in order to recover she was able to tell her story on the oprah winfrey show on november 11th 2009 now this story made international news Mm -hmm. because this was actually the oprah winfrey show was the first time that she actually showed her face after the incident you can you can find clips of this. I yeah. didn't watch the whole thing, but you can definitely find clips of this if you want to see her then. And she basically did this to bring awareness and because her family was pretty much asking for help to pay the medical expenses. Absolutely. And, you know, other stuff. So she was able to undergo an experimental face transplant surgery in May of 2011, receiving a face and hands by a team led by Dr. Bodon Pomahak, B-O-H-D-A-N-P-O-M-A-H-A-C. This was part of the reason why they were asking people to mm-hmm. donate, because this was like, you know. It's literally an experimental surgery. Yeah. So it went successfully, but she caught pneumonia shortly after and actually had to have the hands removed due to the infection and resulting poor circulation yeah well uh, so i don't know exactly what happened but it sounds like if she was recovering from that surgery Mm -hmm. that'd be a lot and then if any transplant you worry about you're rejecting rejecting, yeah and that's more dangerous than anything yeah your body rejecting parts of itself but if you already have an infection like oh no yeah So she's fine, actually. She went on a couple other interviews. There's a 60-minute interview with her after this about the whole situation that Mm -hmm. you can... I could only find clips of it, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Probably. But she and her family filed a $50 million lawsuit against Sandra Harold in 2009 after all of this had happened. Sandra actually passed away of a ruptured aortic aneurysm at the age of 72, like, the next year. So, like, Mm -hmm. in 2010 or something like that. So, her attorney, Robert Golger, released the following statement um, after her death and about the lawsuit. Quote, Miss Harold had suffered a series of heartbreaking losses over the last several years, beginning with the death of her daughter who was killed in a car accident, then her husband, then her beloved chimp Travis, as well as the tragic maiming of friend and employee Charla Nash. In the end, her heart, which had been broken so many times before, could take no more. Unquote. 
Now, in November of 2012, Charla Nash reached a settlement with Harold's estate since mm-hmm. she has passed away and received approximately $4 million in the settlement. So they did, they, they won, essentially. Well, there's no way that woman had $50 million. No. No, and I wonder if it was almost like we're covering all the medical expenses and now all the law expenses oh, yeah. and then all of the whatever emotional traumas. You know what I mean? Like, oh, and I think it just added up. I'm sure so. it was. There, you can't put a price on what happened to her. No, but I'm sure oh, fifty no. million was generous. Like you could have named any number, and, it would and be I'd too been low. like, I'd be like, okay, yeah. But I mean, I know that lady didn't have that much money. Like, there's no, no way she I don't had think that much so. money. Right. I was going to ask you if they remain friends. <laughs> yes, no, no, I don't know how close. I just know they were friends and knew each other for a while. I don't know if they were, like, BFFs. You know well, I mean? you, then you said that she she worked, Charlotte worked for yeah. Sandra, which makes me think that she, they were. They were gal pals, but they weren't necessarily. Yeah, they weren't biffles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so Charla also tried to sue the state of Connecticut in 2013, but her claim was denied. She argued that they knew the animal was dangerous. However, Connecticut Attorney General Richard Blumenth noted that there was a defect in the previously written law. When the Department of Environmental Protection was questioned during this investigation, a spokesperson clarified that Travis was exempt from this law because he did not appear to present a public health risk and was owned before the registration requirement began. So one of those, okay, I understand that he was owned before the requirement began, but Mm -hmm. at the same time, he's the reason that they made the law. Yes, and there is a story, which I didn't go very far, I, I didn't even mention this in my notes, but... There were, like, a, at least one person, if not a couple more, but there's one person for sure that spoke out after this specific statement was released, saying that she was actually bit by Travis. Not, like, terribly hard, but she had to get a rabies shot afterwards. Yeah. Um, Like, way, way back when he first w- moved to Connecticut with Sandra and Jerome. She said, it was, like, in 1997 or something. However... The police department didn't have any record of her filing a complaint, even though Mm. she said she did. Mm -hmm. Now, whether she did and it just kind of got lost in transaction over the years Mm -hmm. or she didn't and but it still happened. Like, nobody knows because there's no paperwork for it. Um, But she and like a couple other people, but especially that person was like, they knew they just were friends with Jerome and Sandra. So they were just saying he wasn't. A safety risk. That's the problem. That's the biggest problem I have with all of this. That's not true. I have a lot of problems. One of the biggest problems I have with this is that they literally n- knew he was getting too. He was not able to be contained. Yeah. Basically, a- as it was, they had to make a law because of it, but then they didn't apply it to him. Yeah. Like that just. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like you, yeah. you made a law because you're like, oh shoot, what if another, what if another chimp does the exact same thing he just did? Yeah, what do and you it's mean? like, what do you mean? Yeah, I guess in the first incident, like he didn't hurt anybody. He just kind of was out and about. So they were like, yeah, he got out, but like he didn't really do any damage. You know what I mean? But then why do you have to make a law about? No, it? I, no, I agree. I'm just, I, I'm yeah. leaning devils at. Listen, you're looking at me. I don't think people should own chimpanzees as pets. They I think I personally think chimpanzees are terrifying. That's they just are. That's they just are because they have this kind of power. Yeah. But people look at them, it's like, oh, it's like a kid. No, no it's not. They're smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a an adult who doesn't have necessarily a moral compass. Right. Like they, they, they just don't, don't know. have like the humanity. Right. Or, not that the world really has a great sense of that right now. <laughs> but I mean, really, they don't have the sense of understanding consequences. I mean, they do, but they don't. Like, Well, yeah, and depending on how Sandra raised him, he may not have had consequences. Yeah. So... So U.S. Representative Earl Blumenauer introduced the Captive Primate Safety Act on January 6, 2009, which would have added monkeys, great apes, and lemurs to the list of prohibited wildlife species that cannot be sold or purchased through interstate and foreign sales. 
Because of the tragic event with Charla Nash, this act was reintroduced on February 23rd, 2009, with more backing from the Humane Society of the United States and the Wildlife Conservation Society. Now, the resource I saw said it passed 323 to 95, but I don't know really what the results were from that specifically. Different states have different laws. Yeah. And what they say... They have a different meaning for dangerous animals or prohibited wildlife. You know what I mean? So, Which is born out of ignorance in a way. Yes. Like, the 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 people that make laws about health care are not necessarily health care professionals. The people that make laws about who can own what animals are not necessarily professionals who deal with animals. Yeah. And therein true. lies the actual problem. Yeah. <laughs> not to get too political, but... <laughs> Y'all want to make rules based on what level of dangerous animal when... Who's, who's advising you? Now, yeah. I don't know, but... <laughs> I don't know. But these people just made up a rule, and then were like, but our friends are exempt. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, I mean, that was local, I guess, but state, local. This goes all the way to the top, baby. Yeah, you're right. So only 20 states have a comprehensive ban that typically classifies wild cats, large non-domesticated carnivores, reptiles, and non-human primates as dangerous animals or otherwise prohibit private ownership of these species. Wait, no reptiles or large carnivorous reptiles? Just reptiles. But I think there are subsections to these, Mm -hmm. so... They are classifying certain reptiles as dangerous, a.k.a. snakes longer than six feet kind of thing. Or venomous snakes. But not like a gardener snake. You can have that as a pet. It's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 13 states have partial bans on exotic animals. This means that they ban specific but not all non-traditional non-domesticated animals. For example, they may allow ownership of small primates, but not large primates. Connecticut falls into this category as of right now. West Virginia also falls under the partial ban. I looked that up because of Oh, West it. Virginia, you can own some wild things, eh? We're not the worst, though, which is surprising. I, no, Florida, I bet. Actually, no. Oh, Actually, my no. gosh, I don't believe it. If you click on this website that I looked up, this is what West Virginia's stuff says about their law. Their okay, partial so it, it kind of tells about the partial ban. Yeah. Okay. So the state of West Virginia found the possession of dangerous wild animals to present a serious public health and safety concern. Because of this, the state prohibits a person from possessing a dangerous wild animal unless the animal was owned prior to June 1st, 2015. And the owner obtained a permit. Under this statute, a dangerous wild animal means a mammal, bird, reptile, amphibian, or aquatic animal, including a hybrid that is dangerous to humans, other animals, or the environment due to its inherent nature and capability to do significant harm. They classify bears, big cats, canids, primates, constrictor snakes greater than six feet, venomous snakes, and alligators specifically as dangerous animals. Although there are other rules listed underneath each of these categories, these are just the general it's terms. It's like that snake that got out in Morgantown. Was yes. that real? Right? That was real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a snake, a big old... Yeah. A big old bobcat. Mm-hmm. If you're following the rules, and especially for zoos like us that are under the AZA, if you follow the rules, West Virginia has a very... They... It is very tricky to move animals across state lines if you're doing it the right way. Yeah. Because of these laws and the DNR for the zoos, the AZA, you know, different things like that. Because you have to have so many different licenses. Even if you're moving, like, animals that already live here, like possums or things, Mm -hmm. it's insane to try to move them even across state lines to Martins Ferry, Ohio, or wherever... Because if they're not from there, since they do so well here, if you put them in the wrong spot, they could be an invasive species. Not that they are, they're they're already from here, but they could be an invasive species for that particular spot that you put them in. Yeah, like this grove of trees does pretty well. You introduce three possums. Right, you could have issues. We're just using possums as an example. Yeah, well, I'm I'm just saying it's a native species to here, and that's one of the ones that we have trouble placing because of the rules. Those and, like, skunks and different types of birds are really, really hard to move. 
Well, they probably have to have so much territory to themselves as far as birds yeah. go. Like, and it also depends, too, on what types of diseases that they can move in and out. Because my manager told me that reindeer, for us, for example, were really hard because they can transmit diseases that, like, deer can here. Like, so, yeah, well, so, that's, that was a whole thing. Like, if you are in with different hooved animals, you have to change your boots depending on the animal. Because yeah. uh, what are hooved, hooved animals are... I mean, some of them are ungulates, but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, that's yeah, the right yeah, thing. yeah, I don't know. But they're, the different hooved animals can transmit diseases between each other, and you wouldn't necessarily know. Yeah, some of them get sick, some of them are just care. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. It's a whole, whole thing. But that's the thing. Like, you have to have the background knowledge, which you do. You have the experience, but, but not everybody does. Yeah. Sorry. Large snakes are on that list as well. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Because it, it took us a lot to get our python from not, florida not us not, not us not me Whitney specifically and Caitlin specifically the zoo where caitlin works yeah has a python named monty i know i love it yes. i've talked about it several times but she's but we, i mean you have to have permits for that like you have like through different places yeah you know what i mean well so. like every state you cross you'd have to make sure they were chill yeah and through the, D- like I said, DNR, AZA for us. Like, if you're a sanctuary, you have to have different ones. You know, right. If but you're a local resident, you probably have to have different ones. There was a snake that is somehow escaped in Morgantown, but no one ever really owned up to where it came from. Yeah. Where it came from, which, like, it was a, <laughs> rumor has, rumor has it, it was a huge snake. Yeah. So who knows? No one's going to, no one's going to admit to that. Person. Yeah. So, 14 states permit private ownership of exotic animals under a licensure or permit scheme, but they don't really classify anything as off-limits, I guess, technically. The final three states of Nevada, Alabama, and North Carolina do not have a statutory or regular regulatory scheme that directly addresses the private ownership of exotic pets, but they may require health certificates or import permits. But that's basically it. Nevada, so you can, North so, Carolina, and... Alabama. No. So you need a permit to import them, but once they're in the state, they can go wherever. Kind of thing. I mean, Nevada has Las Vegas, so I'm not necessarily surprised. Oh, that's true. Like, I feel like there's a lot of shows there. There's a lot of casinos. There's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alabama, nobody makes rules there, I don't think. Not that I'm aware. Not that I'm aware, And I North know. Carolina. That one surprised me a little bit. That one surprises me a little bit, but, like, I think East Carolina University is probably there, and that in itself makes me less surprised. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not a state. Pick another name. Oh, oh, my gosh. I'll go yeah. on this rant again. I don't care. So, I found this story a little background on me and great apes i am not a fan i've never worked with them before and i don't want to when i was younger i tell the story all the time i told all my co-workers when i was younger i used to watch the show i survived has anybody if anybody has seen the show i survived let me know i'm a huge fan it scarred me for life yeah. i think that's part of the reason why i like to talk about this stuff i used to watch it when i was home alone and the only episode that I vividly remember was about a group of people. There was a guy on there who went with a group of people to a orangutan sanctuary. Oh, yeah. And the orangutans, the, it was like a little safari that you would drive through, but you were on a road and the orangutans were like behind a fence, but like still just kind of like right there. Mm-hmm. But somehow the fence broke or they got in the wrong part of the safari and they got attacked by orangutans. And, like, two of the six or seven people got ripped apart and killed while several others were maimed. And the only reason that the man thought he survived was he went into fight or flight mode and grabbed a branch from a tree nearby and, like, attacked one of the orangutans that he assumed was the alpha male. Mm Because a lot of them, you know, kind of go with their alpha male. Sure. And it scared the alpha male enough to call the other orangutans off. But they, like, like I said, two people were ripped limb from limb. Like, died. Like, never, they only found pieces of them, essentially. Like the hitcher. 
Like yeah. Like seen in the Hitcher with the two Big Mac trucks. Yes. And then others of them like lost their hands, lost fingers, lost feet because they just like ripped pieces off. I remember them. you talking about this before. I don't even and know And then I was afraid. I have seen I Survived. I watched it so much. Not afraid of a break-in. I'm really not that afraid of a break-in, although I should be. I was scared for months after that that an orangutan would get into our house somehow. Thanks for that imagery. <laughs> how how would that happen? I mean, they can use keys. They this can isn't use that hard. Clearly, we learned this. So at work, we talk about what animals we want to eventually work with. And a lot of people want to work with gray apes because they are so intelligent. And I can see the hype around it. Like, I really can. But I think that is, like, the one group that I don't want to because they're almost too intelligent for me. Mm-hmm. And it's unnerving. And then you see Kenny and you're like, all right. Well, Kenny's not a great ape. Kenny's- no, 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 no. But I'm saying that's the difference, right? Yeah. Like, Kenny's a lemur, and yeah. he's yeah, and even a lemurs, big old lazy boy. Like, but, like, you can't underestimate them, but at the same time... It's a little bit different. Yeah, we have black and white rough lemurs, and even the rough lemurs, like, if they got on you, they're fairly small, but, like, they would do some damage. They could probably bite an ear off if they tried really hard. Anything can bite your ear off if it tries hard enough. <laughs> that's true. I'm that's not, true. That's not even a thing. But they they have more strength than what people give them credit for. Yeah. Even, I think, the tamarins, if you... Oh, they'll jump on you if they... I mean... Well, if, if they can hurt you. Yeah. They're gonna... I, I mean, mean, they're tiny, but, like, they definitely try to pull your hair out. Yeah. Or poke you in the eye. Like, <laughs> I mean... Yeah, yeah, for your sure. Your teeth are fragile. They'd fall out. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, honestly... Went too that. There's no reason to... Not give an animal the respect it deserves as a wild animal. Yeah, for sure. Even cats, like, or even people's dogs. Yeah, and a lot of, a lot of aggression comes from fear when it comes to animals. Because they can't communicate to you what they need and or want. So they're, you just keep doing what you're doing. They're going to be like, hey, I have clearly explained myself Mm -hmm. to the best of my ability that I'm uncomfortable with this. You're not listening. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bite you now. That's with any animal though. Yeah. But I mean. Terrifying. Terrifying. You you have to, as adult humans, you, we have to try at least to recognize the body language of any animal that we come across and be respectful of that and if you don't know how to read that animal's body language don't with that animal yeah and hopefully you won't really necessarily come into contact with orangutans or chimpanzees i hope i don't although it is a possibility in my career field they make me nervous anyway and i don't know if it's like an uncanny valley thing where like to me it's like i mean really to me it's again chimpanzee robot lateral move yeah lateral move yeah for sure so i guess you already kind of said it but do you think this story would keep you up at night or you think you'll still be able to sleep as snug as a bug in a rug i'm confident that at least our front door unless a chimpanzee or other great ape has directly seen our passcode you're right get in because we don't necessarily use keys to get through that door (laughs) that's true so I feel relatively safe in the house. Mm-hmm. Outside, though, no one's safe. Yeah, and you also <laughs> have to think, like, the stories about people who have exotic animals and, like, nobody knew. And, like, that one guy from Ohio who let them all out and then he killed himself. Yeah, he's just like, I'm going to set all of my exotic animals free. Ta- lions and tigers. And, and bears, bears oh my. <laughs> it was, but it was everybody else's problem and he took his own life. And yeah. then everybody was like... What? It was like Jumanji. Animals just running yeah. around. No, legit. It legit I'm was. Gonna, it's terrifying. I think we should do that story as another episode in itself. But, like, nobody knew. Yeah. Nobody knew that the snake, apparently, in Morgantown, no one ever found who had it. Uh, did they even find it? It's still out there. No. I thought, like, someone said, hey, it's in this tree. Yeah, maybe. And when they went there, it was gone. That snake yeah. did not move that fast. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, the stories about people had pet baby alligators or whatever, and then they put them in the toilets, and now they're in the sewer system. I think that it is Is less Pennywise the clown just an alligator in a clown costume? Scientists and experts have yet to agree. Mm. I think that it doesn't even have to be that complicated. I think an alligator gets too big, you set it loose in the river. Like, Yeah, oh, I'm sure that's happened, too. It's Absolutely. definitely happened. Absolutely. It's definitely happened, and that's why... You shouldn't go in Wheeling Creek. 
I don't think alligators would survive our winters. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> that's my opinion! That's your opinion! <laughs> oh, man. So, yes. I mean, it it freaks me out. I, I don't... I think I've, like, probably heard this story before, but not yeah, really I think... in detail. And I think that the fact that that lady survived is yeah. incredible. Yeah. I, I don't know how, with how much blood she had to have lost and how traumatic that event was. Um, I'm surprised with an aortic aneurysm and that much trauma that Sandra didn't die right there. Oh, she had it later. No, I, well, she, I was thinking she probably had the starts of one. Generally, oh, those things maybe. start uh-huh. and then it rips open. Gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It gotcha, probably gotcha. worsened a lot, but I was I was Stress. thinking more like, I don't know, I'd have a heart attack. Yeah. I'd have a heart attack and I think my heart's probably relatively healthy. Yeah. And like, it's scary too because like, I mean, I can't take on a 200 pound, I mean, you're taking on a 200 pound person. I can't believe she hit him with a shovel and stabbed him multiple times and he still kept going. Yeah, nothing. That's, That in itself is just, yeah. It took it took three bullets to bring him down. After all that, yeah. She said that when she stabbed him, he like turned around, and she like in a weird way felt bad for stabbing him. Which I get it. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like she thinks of him as her son, so he she's like stabbing her son. Yeah, but like. Yeah, I mean, she still did it. Like, yeah, kudos to yeah. her for not just... I, I can't... I mean, she at least tried. Yeah. I don't know why she... I wonder if he, like, started coming after her, and so she got in the car, and then he went back. Because I can't imagine... I think... You, like, tried a couple times, you're like, she, well, this isn't working, and, and you just, and like... part of the 911 call, I think she kind of states that she tried to help because the operator was like well where are you and she's like i had to get away because i thought he was going to kill both of us oh he would have because i think it was kind of she thought charla was dead so i think she thought well i can't help her yeah so i have to run for my life Mm -hmm. now kind of thing probably once it got to a certain extent she 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 tried several things it got to a certain extent where it was beyond what she thought yeah. Charlotte could have survived. Yeah. So, I mean, I think going to the car, like, you weren't you weren't going to kill him. Yeah. Clearly. With a shovel and a knife. Like, yeah. that didn't kill him. And also you have to think, too, like, I don't think... Okay. Let's... I'm just going to say this right now. They shouldn't have had this chimpanzee. They shouldn't have had it. But I think that it's it's a good thing she ran and called nine one one because that could have also helped save Charla's life. You know what I mean? Like if she oh, would have stood there absolutely. and kept trying to get him off of her, or if she died too or got attacked too, then who's calling nine one one? He would have just kept going. Yeah. So, and she would have bled out. Yeah. They both would have died. Yeah. And then absolutely. and then he's out on the town. Oh, it wouldn't have stopped. Her stopping and going to call for help was the only thing yeah. that was going to save them. Even though, other than her not having a chimpanzee. Yeah. Or when a chimpanzee she gets a chimpanzee. to 200 pounds, you don't yeah. go, huh. Huh, this is, uh, we maybe shouldn't have this chimpanzee. It's, I mean, like, I know people love their children and they're not going to be like, ooh, put on a couple pounds, huh, buddy? You have a 200 pound <laughs> chimpanzee. But also, like, that's again personifying that animal that is not... It's a, it's an animal. It's got wild instincts. There's a reason. There is a reason people across the globe don't have chimpanzees as pets, and we have cats instead. Cats are domesticated. We know this. They domesticate themselves. Well, that's still, sure. but you yeah, know what I mean, like that's a it's a different thing. Well, when the power dynamic is different as well. Like yeah, chimpanzee physically. Yeah. I mean, Maybe goes, not intelligence-wise, but physically? Yeah. I mean, it goes with cats, too. I've seen people on TikTok who have servals for pets, and I'm like... Absolutely not. You're playing a wild game here. Or that one TikTok where that bobcat's outside that lady's thing, and everybody's like, we want to pet it, and I'm like, nope. Don't nope, touch it. <laughs> don't, what do you nope, mean? <laughs> nope. But that's the thing. Like, you look at these animals, and you go, mm, I, I, I'm here, and you're there, and I respect... 
your space. where you're coming from yeah. and your space. I'm going to admire you from afar. Good story. Right. I hated it. I, I absolutely hated it. If you have a chimpanzee as a pet, let me know. I'm not going to turn you in or anything. Wink, 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 wink. wink. <laughs> if, if you have a chimpanzee as a pet, call somebody for help. Not us. I'll I don't know what to tell you. for help. So if you think that an orangutan is going to break into your home at any time, please let me know so I'm not the only one that has this one true fear. You can email me and we'll discuss it in private on my at our email, biarpodcast at gmail.com. You can DM us or you can just put it on our timelines on our Facebook. It's just Bug and a Rug or our Twitter and Instagram. They are both at BIAR podcast. You can see all the photos of Travis, the chimpanzee. I might put some pictures of Charla up there. Um, it's, it's a little unnerving. I'll put it that way. Sure. Um, you I can, can only imagine. I can only imagine. You can see our resources, bugandrug.pubby.com. Uh, remember, please, to let us know if you remember how to play monkeys in a barrel. Yeah. If you have suggestions for podcast topics, remember that we are open to those. As well. Please. Do I have a list of things I need to talk about? Yes. Am I willing to move your suggestion to... to the top? The second to top in line? Yes. Sure. <laughs> I go week by week, so yours will be first if you send it to me. I have a long list, but there are days where I'm just like, let's look for something new. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys have a good week. Signing off, I'm Caitlin. I'm Whitney. Bye. Sleep tight.